So good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, Walbrook. For those of you who aren't in the home team, I can see a number of the home team uh, on the last two or three rows. So welcome. Uh, this 2015 half-year results presentation for uh, exchanging. And I hope to use the presentation to try and provide a little bit of perspective to the performance of, of the exchanging business in the first half uh, of the year. This one. So the topics we like to cover, I'm going to few, make a few uh, overview remarks, then I'll talk about sales growth, uh, and then I just want to also pick up on the insurance software business and what we're up to uh, with that. Uh, I'll then spend a little bit of time talking about some of the challenges around the procurement business and uh, the action we're taking there. David will then run through the uh, numbers. And then I'm going to come back and talk about uh, strategy and uh, business development and then conclude uh, with a summary and some outlook uh, remarks. So I think the one thing that we do need to bear in mind, although clearly the uh, performance of procurement business uh, is somewhat tarnishing the results, is that actually we had a record performance in our BPS business and our technology business. And each one of those businesses either performed uh, in line or ahead of the expectations which we had within our own internal budgets. Clearly the procurement business overshadows the hard work that's gone in elsewhere uh, in the business and that clearly is a major disappointment uh, to me, major disappointment to you as well. Uh, we've made some really encouraging progress with uh, offerings within our BPS uh, business some very encouraging signs there in terms of potential opportunities uh, for future growth. The acquisitions that we made in 2014, so uh, agency port and total objects into the insurance software business, and also the Spikes Cavell business, the uh, supply chain analytics or spend analytics business, have all performed very much in line with the business plans that we put together at the time those acquisitions were made. And we're seeing the Zuber opportunities, which I know we talked about on the Insurance Software Investor Day. Uh, they are progressing uh, towards uh, conclusion. And of course, I think was, as was explained at the time, uh, the, although in many instances we're the preferred supplier, ultimately the real question is whether the project goes ahead or not. But they are progressing in, in line, as we imagined. Uh, and I think the other point just to make is an encouraging pipeline uh, in the Zuba business and also uh, an encouraging and strong pipeline for the group uh, overall. So let's just um, spend a few moments talking about sales growth. At the end of the day, it's sales growth that's going to drive the business going forward. Um, I think the first thing to say is that we do set targets for uh, total contract revenue and in-year revenue. Uh, for each year and at the half year we actually were in line, for it slightly exceeded uh, each of those uh, targets. So that's a very encouraging sign. I think the other thing that uh, I was encouraged about in sales generally is just the momentum. So there's a good pipeline there in place now as we move into uh, the third quarter. And also I think the account management program is something which is now starting to bear fruit. So we set some particular targets for account management at the uh, beginning of the year and in fact those targets were being exceeded uh, at the end of the first half. So some examples of areas where we've seen um, revenue opportunities so in the uh, BPS business. The, interestingly the delegated underwriting service is actually a combination of an offering which we had uh, within the insurance business, so Binder 360 and uh, the Binder Cloud within Total Objects. And that, I think, is showing good progress. We've seen a number of uh, uh, wins there. Uh, the global remarket business, that's an e-placing platform, effectively uh, placing um, uh, risk for brokers, US brokers, into uh, the London market. Uh, in the application services business, we've seen some really good progress with both uh, new and existing customers. And uh, the interesting thing about that was we got off to a pretty slow start, but actually there's been some good wins as, as the years progressed. And again, uh, encouraging signs in their pipeline as we move into the second half. 
And then uh, NetSet, uh, although we've not seen any significant revenue from this yet, uh, we've made some good progress with the RSA implementation and also the Rusticon pilot and the participants, uh, participants in that pilot uh, showing very encouraging signs regarding the progress as we go forward with that uh, product. It's been a long time coming, small amount of revenue starting to emerge from that and uh, hopefully we'll see more of that as we go forward. <coughs> I think the only point probably to make in relation to sales growth, of course, as we explained uh, previously, there's quite a significant legacy runoff uh, from the business, particularly in the BPS business. And this is associated with uh, what we call the CAF program uh, within insurance and claims. Uh, also, some of the reconfiguration of uh, the Aon business. And of course, uh, the New South Wales Contract and Workers' Compensation in Australia. All of those are having a negative impact. And then in technology, of course, in the first uh, four months of last year, we actually still had the continuation of the LME contract. But even taking those out, there is some encouraging signs of underlying growth uh, in the business. Turn then to the insurance software business. So we uh, talked a lot about this at the Investor Day uh, in um, the Walbrook here and a number of people I think in this room uh, came to that meeting. Uh, clearly our insurance software business now comprises Zuba, uh, the acquisition of the businesses that we acquired from Agency Port and uh, Total Objects. <coughs> And I believe that by bringing those two businesses together, we've without doubt created a leader in the PNC, the property and casualty uh, insurance software market within the commercial insurance space. So I think we've now got a business that's actually recognised in that uh, marketplace. And they have a product offering by bringing those offerings together, which actually I think second to none. It's, it's offerings which can be uh, offered into the uh, carrier market, into the broker market, uh, small and large, so retail, wholesale brokers, uh, managing general agents and uh, managing agents, for instance, within the Lloyds market. So a very comprehensive uh, offering and uh, what we're trying to do, of course, is bring all of that together. We also had the CMA clearance. I think uh, those of you I've spoken to before uh, will know that I was confident that we would eventually prevail with CMA. Uh, of course, it took a long time, cost money. Uh, it was a significant uh, management distraction, but nevertheless, I think we've made some uh, significant progress since then in getting the integration of the uh, agency port business uh, into the insurance software overall business. So very pleased with the progress of that since that came through uh, the end of April. As I mentioned at the beginning, the acquisitions themselves uh, performing very much in line with the plans which we set. So again, pleased with uh, progress there. And it's also fair to say that within uh, the uh, Zuba business, we've actually won more opportunities in the first half, albeit a number of them small, but more opportunities in the first half than we won in the whole of uh, last year. So again, that's a, a good uh, sign for the development of that business. I think one of the things that, in a way, the CMA process did help us with was actually enabling us to spend a lot of time thinking about the product roadmap. And what we've really tried to do there is to pick the best of each of the offerings from each of the businesses that now make up the insurance software grouping. And as I say, got a very, very comprehensive uh, offering now with a clear roadmap for developing those offerings. And also to the extent any of them will get replaced over time uh, to continue with that uh, process of further development. And I think when we acquired the business, we also uh, made the point that we were moving into a different space, which was the health market. And again, seeing some uh, good progress within that market, a number of interesting uh, opportunities. Also brings into the product portfolio an exposure uh, aggregation uh, product, again, which came in from uh, the agency port business. That is a product that over time we will need to spend more time uh, developing, and that's something that was already in progress within uh, agency port. I guess the final point just to make on uh, the insurance software business is just about the opportunities where we've been down selected to preferred supplier. Those do progress. None of the opportunities we talked about at the, uh, the investor day for the insurance uh, business, uh, the insurance uh, software business has actually dropped out. They're still all progressing and we're encouraged by the progress, but they're only done uh, when they're done. And, Clearly, once that we get to that stage, assuming they do get done, then we make appropriate uh, trade announcements. Uh, just a brief word about really, I suppose in a way, this is the, um, sort of the cosmetics of the business, the hygiene factors, just making sure that we get stuff right and we, what I 
focus on very much is about trying to simplify what we do within the business. So we've been working on a number of uh, projects. The end user computing uh, project was all about trying to get people into uh, Office 365, Workday to bring together a number of the HR platforms uh, into one platform, a Workday platform. And then those two uh, projects, in fact, are now largely complete. Uh, finance transformation program is ongoing. That's putting all of the business onto uh, an SAP uh, platform. And we've, we've had, we're having a staged um, go live on that, and that is now in progress. Uh, have we seen the real benefits from these programs? Uh, not yet. We've seen some. Uh, certainly, we expect to see more benefits as we go into uh, the uh, new year. So let me talk about the uh, procurement business, uh, where we're at with procurement uh, and, and what we're doing with that business. Um, again, there was a, an investor day uh, last um, November when we talked about the procurement business and we presented the strategy there which was very much about a transformation of a business from a business built around uh, labour augmentation into one that was built around technology and a technology uh, platform. And you'll recall that we acquired the uh, MM4 business and also the uh, supply chain analytics business by Scavell uh, to provide the basis of that uh, platform and of course also invested uh, internally in the uh, technology. So that strategy uh, remains in place in the sense that uh, we do want to move the business into a, a technology uh, offering. I think the the uh, challenge that the business has faced really is actually what I would call a perfect storm. So there were three areas that have really impacted that business. Uh, one is that um, we've not been able to take the cost out of the business as we transition from a traditional procurement outsourcing business into a technology based business. Um, we've uh, not been able to secure the volumes we hoped we would get in tail spend management from the uh, contract. Uh, which we brought in. And so the um, overall business, of course, um, was also expecting to gain some new business within the uh, what we effectively call procurement outsourcing, traditional procurement outsourcing, and a number of those contracts didn't actually materialise. So a combination of those things effectively meant that we had a cost base that really wasn't covered by the revenue. So it's as simple as that. And we'd also invested in cost uh, within this uh, major tail spend management contract. Now if you think about the business itself, it's really in, we explained that it was in three component elements. Uh, we've got what we call uh, PaaS and SaaS, which is the technology uh, part of the business, uh, the uh, traditional outsourcing business, and then tail spend management. And each one of those has had its uh, challenges. Uh, some good challenges and some not so good challenges. So in the uh, PaaS and SaaS business, a technology-based business, we have seen some good growth uh, in that business. Uh, we've seen new opportunities secured and we've also seen existing uh, opportunities uh, renewed. The investment has continued in that business in terms of uh, growing uh, the uh, revenue, so obviously a relatively high level of uh, marketing spend and resource in that business, which to a certain extent impacted the level of contribution that's dropped through into uh, operating profit of the business. And then the other aspect to uh, the business is really just to see a continuation of um, the investment within the business going forward. So. That business in itself is growing, it's small, uh, but nevertheless is really the kernel for trying to build pr uh, procurement offerings around the technology platform. The, um, if you think about the traditional outsourcing business, we had a number of customer exits from that business uh, at around the end of the year. Uh, some of those um, really just because contracts effectively were coming to an end. In a couple of cases they were because uh, the, there was a discussion between ourselves as to whether we were realising benefits, so uh, some contracts which actually effectively uh, were terminated. Um, and so a combination of a number of factors meant that uh, the revenue in that part of the business, the traditional outsourcing business, um, was not at the level we would have uh, expected. And then of course in the, the tail spend uh, management part of the business, this was explained that the, uh, the, the strategy day around the procurement business that this is seen as a growth market uh, potentially for procurement offerings and we did have an opportunity, saw an opportunity to have a, a particular contractual relationship 
uh, which would actually give us a strong position in that market. And so we implemented that uh, contract, so that all happened in the first quarter. It wasn't expected that that uh, contract would be generating revenue during that first quarter. Uh, and then after the first quarter, we start to start to see revenue flow from the business. And for a combination of reasons, many of which actually not entirely within our control because of things like scope of spend, available spend uh, from the programme, we've not seen the revenue flow that we expected. It's fair to say, actually, and in fact we were um, complimented in, in the, the quality of the implementation that we had in putting that in place, but unfortunately it's an investment in cost which is not yet uh, covered by revenue. So the challenge around the business was identified uh, the end of March, at the end of the first quarter. We put together what we call a recovery plan, and the, the recovery plan was intended to see the improvement of the business it, it through into the second half so that we actually had a run rate profitable business going forward. Uh, the cost part of that, so the first 90 days of that plan, which took us through to the end of June, the cost part of that plan I, progressed well. We took a lot of cost out of the business, but the real challenge uh, on the, the uh, recovery plan was the fact that it did factor in as we go through the second half, uh, growing revenue on tail spend management and also growing revenue uh, on this traditional outsourcing business, as well as revenue growth, which we would expect to achieve anyway in the technology part of the business. We've now taken the view that achieving that tail spend revenue is going to be a challenge, uh, and also we don't, we're not now anticipating any revenue uh, from the traditional outsourcing part of the business, additional revenue. And so now what we're seeing is changing the outlook for that business in the balance uh, of the year. So effectively we had the recovery plan in place, we were progressing through the recovery plan from a cost perspective but really have had to change our expectations in terms of the likely revenues coming in on that business. So clearly what we need to have is a solution because we can't clearly tolerate that uh, position and the solution really is what uh, I refer to as a split and fix solution. Uh, what we're doing here is effectively taking the business uh, into its component parts, taking the technology part of the business and moving the technology uh, part of that business uh, into the, our own technology services business and then the uh, more traditional uh, procurement outsourcing and also the tail spend management part of the business will move into BPS. And the reason for doing this really is to enable us to um, drive the growth of the technology part of the procurement business through technology and drive the growth of the procurement offerings, the traditional offerings to the extent that we want to uh, through uh, BPS. Most important of all is to use the uh, infrastructure that's in place in those respective businesses. So that enables us really to take away uh, the infrastructure of uh, the existing uh, procurement business. The benefit of that, of course, going forward will be that we should end up with a situation where we've got a business at the end of this year, uh, which effectively is a run rate profitable business. We've enlisted some external support to do this from a restructuring organisation just to help us uh, do that and make these necessary changes relatively quickly. The BPS part of the business will effectively run uh, under the leadership of um, Adrian Guttridge uh, and technology, of course, under the leadership of uh, Andrew Binns. So I think we've We've identified uh, the solution. The solution is now in the in progress of being uh, implemented. Uh, we're very committed, obviously, to make this solution work. Personally, I'm committed. I, if it's the last thing I do in exchanging, I'll make sure it does work. And um, we clearly what we will do also going forward is report, continue to report the business, the procurement business, because what we don't want to do is just lose it within uh, technology and uh, BPS. But in time, the, those two parts of the business will effectively be the surviving parts, but the procurement offering, the technology offering, clearly will continue within technology. And to the extent that we want to continue some of the more traditional outsourcing business, tail spend management and so on, uh, then that will continue within uh, BPS. As a consequence of all of this, clearly we've looked at the investment in the procurement business and we've decided that the goodwill associated with the more traditional outsourcing part of the business uh, will effectively be impaired and so as you've seen in the accounts that's actually been uh, written off. So that's really all I wanted to say 
for this part of the presentation. I'll um, come back and talk about how we see the business developing going forward from a strategic uh, perspective. So I'll now hand over to David. So thank you, Ken. Good morning, everyone. So as Ken has said, in the first half, we've seen a good performance in all um, parts of the business apart from procurement. I'll firstly drill into the group level KPIs and then add some more detail on procurement before concluding with the performance of BPS and technology. So starting with the revenue bridge, the chart at the top of this slide shows the split of growth and shrinkage in the business. As usual, I've separated out the inorganic growth. The acquisitions have performed well. You can see the negative impact of foreign exchange, principally in the euro and the Australian dollar. Turning to the operating profit bridge, you can see on the lower chart the impact of the acquisitions made over the last 12 months, as well as the negative impact of foreign exchange. The half-year results include the benefit from cost efficiencies achieved both last year and in the first six months of this year. Other than in procurement, which comprises only 6.5% of the group by net revenue, the operating performance of each of the businesses was in line or above our expectations. The income statement illustrates the significant difference between adjusted and statutory results for the period. I'll talk about the impairment in procurement shortly. We incurred £12 million of costs in the period on acquisition-related transactions and amortisation. The most significant acquisition-related cost was the legal and other costs of managing the CMA process on our acquisition of the former agency port businesses. The increase in the net finance charge reflects the higher level of drawn debt in the business following the investments that we made last year. We're expecting the finance charge to be slightly higher in the second half, resulting in a total interest expense of between seven and a half and eight million pounds for the full year. So we continue to expect the normal effective tax rate to be in the mid to low 20s percentage points. So I'll now look at our uh, cash performance for this year, for the half year. This slide shows the walk from adjusted operating profit to operating, op operating profit to operating cash flow. As anticipated in the first half, we've seen 14.1 million of working capital associated with the BA Systems UK procurement contract unwind. There's a small balance to unwind in the second half. The impairment of goodwill and other non-cash adjusting items is highlighted here. We've also paid out 4.8 million in restructuring costs in the first half of the year. As normal, the full amount of non-controlling interest dividends were paid out in the first half of the year at 12.5 million pounds. We continue to expect the normalized cash conversion ratio of operating cash flow to adjusted operating profit to be around 75%. The remaining 25% is due to non-controlling interest dividends and pension plan recovery payments as these outflows are shown in operating cash flow but not in adjusted operating profit. The capital expenditure in the period was in line with our expectations and we remain on target for this to be around 30 million for the full year. <coughs> the trend in lower capital investment is set to continue next year as a result of the completion of our internal change programmes, as Ken highlighted. Turning to look at the movement in cash in the first half of the year, you can see the low level of cash tax paid in the period. This was mainly due to lower quarterly payments owing to restructuring costs in 2014. The 9% weakening in the euro over the first six months of the year has created a significant foreign exchange impact when we retranslate the £54 million cash balance held in Germany from Euro back into sterling. Before talking about the other sectors, so I'd now like to turn to talk about the procurement business. The half-year results include a loss of £6.8 million in the business. This includes £1.8 million of allocated shared service costs. 
The half-year result was materially worse than we expected when we established the budget for 2015. As we stated in the first quarter 2015 update in April, we then established a recovery plan for the business. However, the turnaround in the business has been too slow. As a consequence, the full year forecast for the business deteriorated further in quarter two. And this is why we've taken the step of changing the solution for the procurement business as Ken has outlined. Looking at the underperformance in some detail, the issues in the business relate to the cost base, operational performance, and the level of new sales. In the traditional procurement outsourcing business, as highlighted in the April trading statement, the business has suffered from a number of contract exits and amendments, as well as underperformance on several contracts. We'd anticipated that in quarter two, we would see new sales being delivered and the overcapacity in the business being utilized on these new contracts. However, no significant new sales have been won since then, and the overhead in the business is excessive. Further, the outsourcing and tail end spend contracts won in 2014 have underperformed also. This is in part due to delivery issues on our side and in part due to lower volumes of business coming through from clients. As a consequence of this underperformance, at 30th of June we've booked an exceptional write down in the value of our procurement business, as well as one specific onerous contract provision. The impairment charge is against the assets of the traditional outsourcing business. We've retained the book value of the two technology-based procurement businesses we've acquired. Details of the impairment are shown in the appendix. Additionally, although not booked in the half-year results, we will record an exceptional cash costs in the business in the second half of the year as we implement the revised strategy for the business. So having talked about procurement, I'd now like to review the performance of each of the other businesses and I'll start with the largest, Business Processing Services. We said in the results presentation in February that BPS would experience £28 million of year-on-year -year revenue reductions from claims, workers' compensation and broking contract changes. We also said that despite this, we expect to maintain local currency profitability during 2015. This would be through a combination of underlying revenue growth, by focusing on higher margin service, by investing in automation, and also by closely managing our cost base. We said that this would position the sector well for a return to growth in 2016. The first half results indicate that we're on track in all of these areas. In insurance, as planned, underlying growth in revenues has partially offset the revenue reductions. The tight management of the cost base, as well as new efficiency initiatives, have improved margins. In terms of investment, the Central Services Refresh Program has moved into a more advanced stage. The investment in the first half was modest, but this will increase significantly from the second half in CSRP. This investment is a statement of intent on our part and is key to ensuring that we remain at the centre of the London market. In financial services, the investment in technology and ongoing cost-based restructuring have progressed well. We have, however, been adversely impacted by the weak euro when profits are retranslated back into sterling. So turning to the technology sector, the business has performed in line with our expectations for the half year. After a slow start to the year, the application services business has gained momentum, gaining new business with existing clients as well as new client wins. This has helped to partially offset the impact from the exit of the London Metal Exchange contract and also a higher amortisation charge. In insurance software, since acquisition, the businesses acquired from Agency Port and the Total Objects business have performed well. Integration activity is starting to bear fruit, both in cost efficiencies and in improving growth prospects. The level of investment in the insurance software business in the last few years has been significant. The investment requirement in the software business peaked last year. Although there are a variety of license models in the business, the near-term performance of the business is dependent on the timing of initial license wins. 
The half-year results have clearly been impacted by the very poor performance in procurement. Inevitably, this will detract from the good performance in the BPS and technology businesses. As usual, the performance of the group will be second half weighted. We are now focused on executing the plan to deliver growth in BPS and technology, deliver value from the organic and inorganic investments we've made, and on executing the revised solution for the procurement business over the next quarter. That brings us to the end of the financial section. Thank you for your continued interest. And now I'd like to hand back to Ken to talk about business development and the outlook. So thank you, David. I um, say really just want to use this section to bring together a few remarks about the uh, business development, uh, the investment proposition itself, and then clearly cover uh, the outlook. So I think the strategy that we set out to pursue within exchanging is a robust strategy. It's one that we continue to pursue. I don't think the challenges around the procurement business in any way impact the progress that we've been making generally through the business. So it's, it's very much about uh, focusing on uh, technology and innovation and, and insight into customers' markets, using that insight and the technology innovation to develop uh, differentiated offerings for customers that add value to their business. And then drawing the distinction between sale of technology and also the sale of technology-enabled uh, services and that uh, strategy continues it's one that we it's a journey we started and it's a journey that we continue on and uh, interestingly recently we uh, set about listing all the various offerings we have around the group and trying to categorize them into emerging embryonic uh, what we would call um, core growth uh, and core well effectively core uh, decline uh, products and when we actually looked at each one of those uh, over significantly over 50% of those are now technology based either as technology or technology enabled services. So I think we've made uh, huge progress uh, doing that. What that's really meant is that we've moved from being a business that's focused just on uh, low cost uh, arbitrage to one that's actually taking value to the customer. Instead of use, having solutions based just around the provi provision of uh, labour, it's about providing uh, technology. It's really about trying to make sure that we manage also our cost base to respond to the changes that have taken place. Uh, in uh, the business and I think as we go down through that journey clearly one of the businesses that we've not really succeeded yet in making that transformation uh, clearly is the procurement business so as you peel back the component parts of the procurement business which have different levels of performance different prospects uh, what we have to be doing is making sure that we uh, really focus on those areas of the business that truly can add value uh, going forward so to me, technology at our core remains very much the strategy that we uh, pursue, and I believe that's the, the road and the journey that we will uh, continue on. I think the investment proposition itself actually also remains robust. If you look at our uh, business processing services part of the business, BPS, uh, clearly uh, uh, strong performance in that business, uh, good margins, uh, predictable revenues, uh, predictable cash flows, predictable profitability within the business. Uh, we clearly have now uh, managed to uh, have in place a stabilised what we call capital markets business. So this is a business in uh, Italy and in Germany. We have uh, an enviable position really in the insurance market, not only here in the London market, but also the position that we have uh, within the workers' compensation business in Australia, the business that we do in the uh, broking market as well. And of course, uh, the uh, software business, which is a sort of overlap, if you like, between the services business and our technology business. Thinking about the technology business, we have without doubt a leading uh, insurance software business uh, in the PNC space. Uh, we are seeing clearly the development from, albeit small beginnings, of uh, SaaS and PaaS, the SaaS and PaaS offerings uh, within procurement and using that uh, technology uh, platform. And very encouraging actually is the growing application services business. Now we've already said uh, the 
invest today that we do believe that the insurance software business can achieve a target revenue of around about 100 million over the next uh, three years and targeting a margin of 25 percent. We actually have a similar goal for the application services business. The margin wouldn't be at that sort of level because that, in that market you can't expect to see uh, software margins. But we do see significant opportunity for growth of revenue within the technology business and margin expansion and the blended margin of those two businesses should in due course give a margin not dissimilar to the sort of margin that we uh, would achieve within the BPS business. So I think when you look at the investment uh, proposition in that context, uh, so if you look for instance at the insurance software business, uh, to me the, the valuation of that business potentially is at least equal to uh, the value of the overall exchanging business, a very, very important part of our business, offering significant opportunities for development. The same could be said really of the uh, BPS business, given the strength of, of cash flow uh, and the strong margins within that business. So the investment proposition uh, remains uh, robust. And then finally, just to talk a little bit about synergies, if, you, if we look at bringing these two uh, businesses together, of course, so the key thing if we've got technology and BPS is to be able to show that they do have uh, synergies across them. We're seeing opportunities, for instance, to combine the insurance software product with the uh, insurance so uh, services offering and indeed application services. So those three service lines which cut across those businesses can uh, be brought together. I mentioned earlier on the bringing together of the uh, Binder the cloud and bind the 360, so bind the 360 from the insurance business and, and uh, bind the cloud from uh, total objects. And then of course the SaaS and PaaS uh, offering is one that we can upsell through that offering into other procurement offerings within customers, but also take that offering into customers that exist in other parts of our business. So I think the two businesses do actually neatly fit together and do offer some uh, considerable synergies uh, between them. So finally, I think just uh, as a summary and uh, to comment really on the outlook, I, clearly the performance of the procurement business has been disappointing. And I can assure you that um, it may well be disappointing to you, but it's not half as disappointing as it is to me. And we've actually gone through uh, a significant transformation journey and we've made massive progress in that journey. And I think you know, temporarily we've been not slightly off course. Uh, we perhaps describe it as a bump in a road. It's actually a big bump. It's one that we need to address. But it is very much a short-term thing. There is a solution for addressing it. We're implementing that solution and that solution will be effective. Believe me, we will ensure that by the end of this year that all the problem associated with the procurement business will be dealt with and that we will be continuing to progress with the technology part of the business and the other services to the extent those services we believe truly can uh, be profitable and bring value to our business. It's without doubt that we are actually benefiting from the organic investments that we've made within the business, many of which have been technology related, some have been investments that we're making into uh, the core and the backbone of the business and we are seeing the benefit from the acquisitions that we've made. So if you look back over time, the acquisition of AR Enterprises, which transformed the capital markets uh, business in Italy, the uh, MM4 business, uh, spikes we're now seeing progressing in line uh, with the plan that we set for itself, uh, agency port and total objects, all of those acquisitions are actually showing benefits now increasingly to uh, exchanging. We will, of course, uh, pursue the uh, split and fix uh, approach for the procurement business. As I say, we'll, we'll make sure that actually happens. And I think as a consequence of the performance in the procurement business, and disappointing as it is, our outlook now for the full year is a trading performance in line uh, with last year with a return to profit growth in uh, 2016. So I think with that, we'll hand over to questions. Thank you, Ken. So we have some uh, microphones uh, in the room. If, um, if there are any questions, if you could raise your hand and uh, one of the mic come, come through. Uh, good morning, it's David Dobson from the Can I ask um, a few? Um, firstly, focusing on the procurement side, 
I just wondered if you can just um, give us um, some insight into the technology side of doing the business. Just confirm whether that side of the business is profitable um, on the current run rate or whether you see further growth there to achieve profitability. That's the first one with regards to procurement. The second one with regards to procurement was just to, I well, just wondered if you can give us um, some insight into the shared service overhead and how that will evolve going forwards um, given the split between those two businesses. And I'll do the third one separately because it's not procurement. Okay, so uh, well, let me comment on the procurement technology business. So the technology business in procurement makes the largest contribution. Uh, ultimately, as to whether it's profitable or not, depends how you allocate the overhead costs of uh, the procurement business. Uh, it is fair to say that we have invested quite considerably in cost to support the growth of that business. Uh, as we look forward at the business going forward, there is no doubt that it can be and will be profitable based on the approach that we're using here. So then on the um, yeah, so we've said, we wanted to highlight really just to, uh, that there's a shared service charge in the first half um, across the procurement business of 1.8 million pounds and then similar sort of thing in the second half. Really just to illustrate in terms of the contribution level from the procurement business, the loss isn't quite as bad as it, as it appears. Um, and that's the same for all of the businesses take those um, shared service um, charges. And also, just to give an indication as we, as we go into 2016, now that the um, procurement business in the solution effectively goes into two segments um, of BPS and technology, the effect of what we do is we allocate that charge into those businesses. I mean, the point really is that, you know, the, the, the good thing about shared services, as the group grows, you're able to absorb any um, shortfalls in, um, in areas of reduction in the group. Um, by uh, growth in other areas of the group. If it were completely standalone as a business, you would, you'd have a stranded cost. But because the shared service is able to then reallocate that into other areas of growth um, in the group, um, which we're seeing come through in both BPS and, and in particularly in technology, um, those don't become stranded costs. And there might be a six month year lag in that, in that sort of process. That's the reason we've highlighted it. Okay, thanks, and then my final one to focus on the other 90% of the business. Just in terms of the Zuba um, prospects at the capital market today, recently you touched on a number of prospects where you've been selected as preferred supplier. Uh, what did you can give us some update on that um, and how the pipeline has progressed? Uh, yeah, I, the update is that each one of those opportunities that we talked about at the time of the uh, capital markets day is progressing. Uh, and I mean, none of them, I think I mentioned in, in my remarks, that none of those opportunities has fallen away. So we're still progressing them. And they've all progressed as we would expect. And I think they're getting to, I mean, one or two of them, we, we are actually in the uh, contracting stage with them. And remains to be seen ultimately whether we can agree on contractual terms and whether the projects go ahead. But uh, each one of those projects, as I say, is progressing. In terms of the pipeline, I think the pipeline generally in the, uh, Zuba business and the insurance software business is very encouraging. Uh, we've seen, uh, particularly actually with the acquisition of the total objects business, and they, they have done uh, exceptionally well. I think the uh, first half of this year, uh, they saw more wins than they'd seen, than they saw in the whole of last year. They had a very busy, busy half, uh, first half. Of course, that tends to be the smaller ticket items, uh, but generally there's a lot of activity in that business. It actually is very encouraging. Have any other questions? No. Well, in that case, um, we will. We've got tea and coffee outside. If if any of you want to stay behind and um, put some questions to Ken and David informally, um, please do. Otherwise, I'll draw the meeting to a close. And thank you very much for joining Lexi, us this morning. Lexi, I was just going to make some concluding make remarks. Con I Ken, was, Ken yes. would like to make some concluding comments before we. So before we I just wanted to. Um, well, a couple of things really. I, I think the, um, as I've mentioned in the uh, the presentation itself, the procurement thing is not something that um, I personally am terribly proud of. Uh, it's it's clearly had an impact in terms of the progress that we've made as a business, recognise that. Um, I think the 
what we shouldn't lose sight of though is that we do have a unique position in the London market. We have a very strong uh, BPS business which is benefiting from investment in technology, technology enablement. Uh, we've got a growing application services business and clearly a leading uh, insurance software business. And I don't think we should underestimate also the opportunities for growth still within the procurement business but the procurement offering within the technology business and within uh, BPS. It will enable us to uh, rationalise cost and so it's, it, I think it's going to be a very important part of the, the plan for the balance of this year. Um, it was also obviously announced that uh, my plan is to actually retire at the end of the year. Um, the, the main reason I think for that is that we, I believe the business has gone through a transformation and I think it is time for the, uh, the business really to, to really invest strongly in sales growth, building on the platform that we've actually established for the business and also effectively to ensure that we get the returns on the investments that we've actually made over the last couple of years. And uh, I think it's time really that that can be handed on now to uh, someone else to move forward the business in that direction. There will certainly be no um, relaxing for my part between now and uh, the end of the year. Uh, really my focus for the balance of this year is all about ensuring that uh, the split and fixed plan for the procurement business is actually delivered and ensuring that we do deliver the results for the balance of this uh, year. It's, as, a, as was said in the announcement, I've, it's been a privilege uh, to actually have this role. I think we've made, I do believe we've made significant progress uh, over the last uh, four years and I believe we've got a very solid foundation to take the business forward for the next four or five years as well. So thank you.